devotional exercises today will be conducted by the Right Reverend Dr. Shannon McVeigh Brown, Episcopal Bishop of, of Vermont. Dr. Brown. Honoring the legacy of Vermont's indigenous people, we acknowledge the traditional, ancestral, and unceded land of the people of the Don, the Abenaki, who have been living and working on this land from time immemorial. It is they who are the traditional stewards of the lands and waters on which we gather today. We acknowledge that we are guests on this land. We acknowledge and recognize that colonialism and the oppression of native peoples is a current and ongoing process. Thus, we must commit to rebuilding our awareness of our present participation. We must respect and help protect the lands within our use. Since moving to Vermont, every time I have an opportunity to speak, it is my custom to begin by going back. Likewise, it seems appropriate as we begin this new year to look back on what we learned because of the pandemic. We were forced to learn that we won't break if we acknowledge and learn from uncomfortable truths in our society. Our pandemic learning has resulted in increased awareness, commitment, and urgency in caring for our planet. Our pandemic learning has resulted in increased awareness about inequities and actions to care for the most vulnerable people in our communities. Our pandemic learning has resulted in people across various walks of life committing to racial conciliation. The Episcopal Diocese in Vermont has dedicated December and January to reading an infamous book written by the first Bishop of Vermont in which he misused our Bible to support slavery. It is the beginning of this shameful, shameful and painful learning for us, but we know that we will be stronger, more faithful and freer people if we learn a complete, truer history of our church, and we will act on what we learn. And I just started learning the Beneke language. The first thing I noticed just a couple of days ago, two, two, one class in, first thing I noticed is that after over a year of living here and several speaking engagements, my teacher pronounced a Beneke differently than I had been. I was embarrassed, but I learned. This is a lot less uncomfortable than many other hard conversations I had last year. For the sake of a better Vermont for all the people of our state, I encourage you to take on this New Year's resolution. Stretch yourself and continue to learn from the challenges of this pandemic. As we work to make our society better, we will make mistakes. That is part of learning. We can't let shame or discomfort get the last word on us being the communities we want to be. So this is my prayer today. Great Spirit God, we give you thanks for another day on this earth. We give you thanks for this day to enjoy the compassionate goodness of you, our creator. You call us to labor with you in tending the earth. Where we lack love, open our hearts to the world. Where we waste, Give us discipline to conserve. Where we neglect, awaken our minds and wills to insight and care. May we with all your creatures honor and serve you in all things. Bind us together in the circle of compassion to embrace all living creatures and one another. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Brown. We will now proceed to the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me in reciting our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Uh, I will now start the session by calling the roll of the members. After I call your name, Please unmute yourself, and in order to be recognized in this remote forum, please respond by saying, this is your name, and I am here. Again, this is your name, and I am here.
So we will start with Addison one, Robin Shy. This is Robin Shy, and I am here. Addison one, Amy D. Sheldon. This is Amy Sheldon, and I am here. Addison two, Peter Conlon. This is Peter Conlon, and I am here. Addison three, Matthew Byron Jr. This is Matthew Byron Jr., and I am here. Addison three, Diane M. Lamfer. Yes, this is Diane Lamfer, and I am here. Addison four, Mari Cordes. Yes, this is Mari Cordes, and I am here. Addison four, Caleb Elder. This is Caleb Elder, and I'm here. Addison five, Harvey T. Smith. Yes, this is Harvey Smith, and I am here. Addison Rutland, Terry E. Norris. Yes, this is Terry E. Norris, and I am here. Bennington one, Nelson Brownell. This is Nelson Brownell, and I am here. Bennington 2-1, Timothy R. Corcoran II. This is Timothy Corcoran, and I am here. Bennington 2-1, Dane Whitman. This is Dane Whitman, and I'm here. Bennington 2-2, Mary A. Morrissey. Yes, this is Mary Morrissey, and I am here. Bennington 2-2, Michael Nigro. This is Michael Nigro, and I am here. Bennington three, David K. Durfee. This is David Durfee and I am here. Bennington four, Seth Bongartz. Seth Bongartz and I am here. Bennington four, <laughs> Kathleen James. Bennington four, Kathleen James. Bennington Rutland, Linda Joy Sullivan. This is Linda Joy Sullivan and I am here. Caledonia one, Marsha Robinson Martell. This is Marsha Robinson and yes, I am here. Caledonia two, Joseph Chip J. Troiano. This is Joseph Chip J. Troiano and I am here <laughs> and all my names. <laughs> Caledonia three, Scott L. Beck. This is Scott Beck and I am here. Caledonia three, R. Scott Campbell. This is Scott Campbell and I am here. Caledonia four, Martha Marty A. Feltis. Yes, this is Martha Marty A. Feltis and I am here. Caledonia four, Patrick Seymour. This is Patrick Seymour and I am here. Caledonia, Washington, Henry Pearl. This is Henry Pearl, and I am here. Chittenden one, Jana Brown. Yes, this is Jana Brown, and I am here. Chittenden two, Aaron Brady. This is Aaron Brady, and I am here. Chittenden two, James M. McCullough. I am James M. McCullough, and I am here. Chittenden three, Trevor J. Squirrel. This is Trevor Squirrel, and I am here. Chittenden three, George W. Till. This is George Till, and I'm still here. <laughs> Chittenden four, one, Michael I. Yantashka. This is Mike Yantashka, and I am here. Chittenden four, two, <laughs> William J. Lippert, Jr. Unmute, Bill. This is William J. Lippert, Jr., and I am here. Chittenden 5-1, Catherine L. Webb. This is Catherine L. Webb, and I am here. Chittenden 5-2, Jessica Brumstead. This is Jessica Brumstead, and I am here. Chittenden 6-1, Robert Hooper. This is Robert Hooper, and I am here. Chittenden 6 1, Carol Odie.
This is Carol Odie, and I am here. Chittenden 6-2, Emma Mulvaney-Stanick. This is Emma Mulvaney-Stanick, and I am here. Chittenden 6-3, Jill L. Krowinski. This is Jill Krowinski, and I am here. Chittenden 6-3, Curtis Kurt A. McCormick. This is Kurt McCormick, and I am here. Chittenden 6-4, Brian Chena. This is Brian Chena, and I am here. Chittenden 6-4, Selena Colburn. This is Selena Colburn, and I am here. Chittenden 6-5, Tiffany Bloomley. This is Tiffany Bloomley, and I am here. Chittenden 6-5, <laughs> Gabrielle Stebbins. This is Gabrielle Stebbins, and I am here. Chittenden 6-6, Barbara Rachelson. This is Barbara Rachelson, and I am here. Chittenden 6-7, Harold Hal Colson. This is Harold Hal Colston. I am here. Chittenden 6-7, Taylor Small. This is Taylor Small, and I am here. Chittenden 7-1, Martin J. Lalonde. This is Martin Lalonde, and I am here. Chittenden 7-2, Ann D. Pugh. This is Ann D. Pugh, and I am here. Chittenden 7-3, John Kalaki. This is John Kalaki, and I am here. Chittenden 7-4, <laughs> Maida F. Townsend. This is Maida F. Townsend, and I am here. Chittenden 8-1, Mary Beth Redman. This is Mary Beth Redmond, and I am here. Chittenden 8-1, Tanya Vihovsky. This is Tanya Vihovsky, and I am here. Chittenden 8-2, Karen Dolan. This is Karen Dolan, and I am here. Chittenden 8-2, Lori Houghton. This is Lori Houghton, and I am here. Chittenden 8-3, Alyssa Black. This is Alyssa Black, and I am here. Chittenden 9-1, Seth Chase. This is Seth Chase, and I am here. Chittenden 9-1, Kurt D. Taylor. This is Kurt Taylor, and I'm here. Chittenden 9-2, Sarah Sarita Austin. This is Sarita Austin, and I am here. Chittenden 9-2, Patrick M. Brennan. This is Pat Brennan, and I am here. Chittenden 10, Christopher P. Matos. This is Chris Matos, and I am here. Chittenden 10, John Pulasic. This is John Pulasic, and I am here. Essex, Caledonia, Terry Lynn Williams. This is Terry Lynn Williams, and I am here. Essex, Caledonia, Orleans, Paul D. Lefebvre. This is Paul Lefebvre, and I am here. Franklin 1, Carl J. Rosenquist. This is Carl Rosenquist, and I am here. Franklin 2, Barbara S. Murphy. This is Barbara S. Murphy, and I am here. Franklin 3-1, Michael McCarthy. This is Mike McCarthy, and I am here. Franklin 3-1, Casey Toof. <clears throat> this is Casey Toof, and I am here. Franklin 3-2, Eileen Lynn G. Dickinson. Yes, this is Eileen Lynn Dickinson, and I am here. Franklin 4, Robert W. Norris. This is Robert W. Norris, and I am here. Franklin 4, Brian K. Savage. This is Brian Savage, and I am here. Franklin 5, Lisa Hango. This is Lisa Hango, and I am here. Franklin 5, Paul Martin. This is Paul Martin, and I am here. Franklin 6, James Gregoire. This is James Gregoire, and I am here. Franklin 7, Felicia Leffler. This is Felicia Leffler, and I am here. 
Grand Isle Chittenden, Leland J. Morgan. This is Lee Morgan and I am here. Grand Isle Chittenden, Michael R. Morgan. This is Michael Morgan and I am here. Lamoyle One, Heidi E. Sherman. Uh, this is Heidi Sherman and I am here. <laughs> Lamoyle Two, Kate Donnelly. This is Kate Donnelly and I am here. Lamoyle Two, Daniel <laughs> Noyes. This is Daniel Noyes and I am here. Lamoyle Three, Lucy Rogers. This is Lucy Rogers and I am here. Lamoyle Washington, Avram Pat. This is Avram Pat. And I am here. Lamoyle, Washington, David W. Iacovoni. Uh, this is David W. Iacovoni, and I am here. Orange One, Rodney P. Graham. I'm uh, Rodney Graham, and I'm here. Orange One, Samantha Lafave. Yes, I am Samantha Lafave, and I am here. Orange two, Sarah Copeland Hansis. I am Sarah Copeland Hansis and I am here. Orange Caledonia, Joseph Parsons. This is Joseph Parsons and I am here. Orange Washington Addison, Philip J. Hooper. This is Philip J. Hooper and I am here. Orange Washington Addison, Larry Sakowitz. This is Larry Sakowitz and I am here. Orleans One, Lynn D. Batchelor. This is Lynn D. Batchelor, and I am here. Orleans One, Brian Smith. This is Brian Smith, and I am here. Orleans Two, Michael J. Marcotte. This is Michael Marcotte, and I am here. Orleans Two, Woodman Woody H. Page. This is Woodman Woody H. Page, and I am here. Orleans, Caledonia, Catherine Sims. This is Catherine Sims, and I am here. Orleans, Caledonia, Vicki M. Strong. This is Vicki M. Strong, and I am here. Orleans, Lamoille, Mark A. Higley. This is Mark Higley, and I am here. Rutland One, Patricia A. McCoy. This is Patricia A. McCoy, and I am here. Rutland 2, Thomas B. Burdett. This is Tom Burdett, and I am here. Rutland 2, Arthur Peterson. This is Art Peterson, and I am here. Rutland 3, William P. Canfield. This is William P. Canfield, and I am here. Rutland 3, Robert G. Helm. This is Robert Helm and I am here. Rutland four, Thomas P. Taranzini. This is uh, Thomas Taranzini and I am here. Rutland five one, Peter J. Fagan. This is Peter J. Fagan and I am here. Rutland five two, Lawrence Cooper P. Coopley. Unmute. Thank you. This is Lawrence Cooperley, and I am here. Rutland 53, Mary E. Howard. This is Mary E. Howard, and I am here. Rutland 54, William Knott. This is William Knott, and I am here. Rutland 6, Stephanie Zach Jerome. This is Stephanie Zach Jerome, and I am here. Rutland 6, Charles Butch H. Shaw. This is Charles Butch H. Shaw, and I am here. Rutland Bennington, Sally Hockey Aki. This is Sally Aki, and I am here. Rutland Windsor 1, James F. Harrison. This is James Harrison, and I am here. Rutland Windsor 2, Logan Nicole. This is Logan Nicole, and I am here. Washington 1, Ann B. Donahue. This is Ann B. Donahue, and I am here. Washington 1, Kenneth W. Goslant. This is Kenneth W. Goslant, and I am here. Washington 2, Robert B. LeClaire. 
This is Robert B. LeClaire, and I am here. Washington 2, Francis Topper M. McFawn. This is Francis Topper M. McFawn, and I am here. Washington 3, Peter D. Anthony. This is Peter Anthony, and I am here. Washington 3, Tommy J. Waltz. This is Tommy J. Waltz, and I am here. Washington 4, Mary S. Hooper. This is Mary S. Hooper, and I am here. Washington 4, Warren F. Kitzmiller. This is Warren F. Kitzmiller, and I am here. Washington 5, Kimberly Jessup. This is Kimberly Jessup, and I am here. Washington 6, Janet Ansel. This is Janet Ansel, and I am here. Washington 7, Catherine Carey Dolan. This is Catherine Carey Dolan from Washington 7, and I am here. Washington 7, Maxine Joe Grad. This is Maxine Joe Grad, and I am here. Washington Chittenden, Thomas S. Stevens. This is Tom Stevens, and I am here. Washington Chittenden, Teresa A. Wood. This is Teresa A. Wood, and I am here. Wyndham One, Sarah Coffey. This is Sarah Coffey, and I am here. Wyndham Two One, Emily Kornheiser. This is Emily Kornheiser, and I am here. Wyndham Two Two, Molly Sullivan Burke. This is Molly Sullivan Burke, and I am here. Wyndham Two Three, Tristan D. Tolino. This is Tristan D. Tolino, and I am here. Wyndham Three, Leslie Goldman. This is Leslie Goldman, and I am here. Wyndham Three, Carolyn W. Partridge. This is Carolyn Partridge, and I am here. Wyndham Four, Michelle Boslin. This is Michelle Boslin, and I am here. Wyndham Four, Mike Maricki. This is Mike Merwicki, and I am here. Wyndham 5, Emily J. Long. This is Emily J. Long, and I am here. Wyndham 6, John M. Gannon. This is John Gannon, and I am here. Wyndham Bennington, Laura H. Sibilia. This is Laura Sibilia, and I am here. Windsor 1, John L. Bartholomew. This is John Bartholomew, and I am here. Windsor 1, Elizabeth Burroughs. This is Elizabeth Lepret Cornell Burroughs, and I am here. Wyndham Bennington Windsor, Kelly M. Payala. This is Kelly M. Payala, and I am here. Windsor 2, John Arison. This is John Arison, and I am here. Windsor, Windsor 3 1, Thomas A. Bach. This is Thomas Bach, and I am here. Video Windsor 3 2, <laughs> Alice M. Emmons. This is Alice M. <clears throat> Emmons, and I am here. Windsor 3 2, Christy C. Morris. This is Christy C. Morris, and I am here. Windsor 4 1, Heather Supernot. This is Heather Supernot, and I am here. Windsor 4-2, Kevin Coach B. Christie. This is Kevin Coach B. Christie, and I am here. Windsor 4-2, Rebecca White. This is Rebecca White, and I am here. Windsor 5, Charles A. Kimball. This is Charles A. Kimball, and I am here. Windsor Orange 1, John O'Brien. This is John O'Brien, and I am here. Windsor Orange 2, Timothy C. Briglin. This is Tim Briglin, and I am here. Windsor Orange 2, James W. Masland. This is Jim Masland, and I am here. Windsor Rutland, Kirk White. This is Kirk White, and I am here. And let me just go back. Bennington 4, Kathleen James. Yes, this is Kathleen James, and I am here. 
Thank you. I do hereby declare that there is a quorum of the members elect present. Next order of business is the election of a speaker and nominations for the office of speaker are now in order. I would caution you to hold any applause until the election of the speaker is announced. At first, the chair shall recognize the member from Springfield, Representative Emmons. Mr. Speaker, <clears throat> I rise today to place a nomination, the name of Representative Jill Kowinski for the Office of Speaker of the House. Representative Kowinski, the member from Burlington, has been representing her district for the past eight years, since 2012. We all know Jill as a colleague, but let me give you a look back at what brought her to Vermont nearly 19 years ago. And then to this body known as the Vermont legislature and now as a candidate for the Speaker of the House. Representative Kowinski grew up in the Buffalo, New York area. She received her BA in urban planning and community development from the University of Pittsburgh. At 22 years old, and with her life before her, she ventured from Pennsylvania to Vermont, drawn here by the values she saw in its people and that of Vermont legislators, that we work together towards a common goal and for the health of our communities. Jill wanted to live those values in her life, so in June of 2002, she drove from Pittsburgh to Springfield, Vermont to begin her journey and what a journey it has been. Jill arrived in Vermont to help regular citizens become involved in the political process. And I remember that day where Jill arrived in Springfield. In looking back, I realized that it took internal strength to drive by yourself from a city to an unknown place, down a dirt road and into a stranger's driveway, knowing she'd be living there for the next five months. I was there that day, helping a friend of mine plant her garden. This friend being the person who had volunteered to house, to house Jill for those months. I saw a young woman get out of her small Chevy Metro car and walk up to us. Jill recalls after our saying our hellos, I welcomed her to Vermont by saying, this is what Vermont legislators do. We help our constituents plant their gardens. And she thought, oh, what have I gotten myself into? And that began to set the foundation of her work. She learned how close to our constituents we are and how we work on their behalf. As she worked with us, her knowledge of Vermont deepened. Time went on and soon Representative Kowinski, still known to us as Jill, arrived here in the State House as the assistant to then Speaker Symington. That position alone gave her the experience and knowledge of the role of the Speaker and the role that the Speaker plays in the House of Representatives, as well as in the State House as a whole. Then a few, day, a few years later, in 2012, Jill came to join us as a colleague, a member of the House representing the Old North End in downtown Burlington. This young woman who had arrived in Springfield two year, 10 years prior was now a colleague and I must say how proud I was of her and what she had accomplished. And her journey continued, serving on the House Human Services Committee, again working towards her goals of creating healthy communities. In 2017, Representative Kowinski was elected majority leader at the same time Speaker Johnson was first elected speaker. In her role as majority leader, Representative Kowinski worked hard to build relationships across the aisle with all the parties and to build the trust to do our work in a productive manner. This knowledge and trust was really put to, was really put to the test 
last March when we had to transition to working remotely. We are successful in this remote format through the work of then Speaker Johnson and Representative Kowinski. So today we have a candidate for speaker who shows a real testament to our work in the State House and to our motto on the Vermont state flag, freedom and unity. Our legislative work is built on working together, regardless of one's party or what part of the state we represent. We work with a level of trust that develops over time. It embodies who we are as a legislative body. And the person I support to lead us in our work for the next two years is the member from Burlington, Representative Kowinski. I ask you to join me in casting your vote for Representative Kowinski for the Office of Speaker of the House. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. The name of Jill Kowinski of Burlington has been placed in nomination for the Office of Speaker. Is there a second to this nomination? The chair will yes, now sir. recognize the member from West Rutland, Representative Burdett. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. There is a second for the nomination. And uh, I, I rise, not just virtually, but physically to, to honor the position uh, that we're voting on today, uh, the Speaker of the House. And it is my honor to second this nomination, not just for a colleague, but also for a friend. I first met Representative Kerwinski nine years ago when she was appointed to fill a vacancy. We served on human services together under the guidance and tutelage of Representative Pugh for two terms. And at this point, I feel, uh, I feel I'd be remiss if I didn't mention another member of our committee, Representative Treber. I'm sure that name alone will drum up some fond memories of the representative from Bells Falls uh, for Representative Kerwinski, uh, who we simply called Treber. When Jill, when Jill got here, she seemed to already have so much knowledge on how things worked. She hit the ground running and immediately went to work for leadership, always on the move, going to meetings to serve who she could and do what she could. And, and in nine years, her commitment and energy level have never seemed to waver. You know, I could make a list of attributes as long as my arm. My fear would be that it would sound robotic and that Jill is not. I'm gonna guess most have read about Jill's work history, political history and biography and have a clear understanding of her managerial capabilities because I think that's what it takes to be the speaker. It could be called manager of the house. She has an impressive resume that has her more than prepared to take over the reins from Speaker Johnson. I'm gonna talk about a side of, of the person Jill is that you won't read in any biography. Early in the session in 2020, before COVID was an issue, I was going to report a bill on the floor on a subject I'm very passionate about, the sexual exploitation of children. A subject I have stumbled over more than once because of my passion for the cause. She remembered that. And just before I started, she fired out a quick text that simply said, you got this. Help me keep my composure, report the bill, and, and we, yes, we got it passed. Thank you, Jill. A simple gesture of thoughtfulness, caring, and understanding, attributes that will serve her well as any attributes. I'm going to guess you don't need this like I did at that time, but with all due, res with all due respect, Kerwinski, you got this. So with that, I second the nomination of Jill Kerwinski for Speaker of the Vermont House of Representatives. Thank you. Thank you. The member from West Rutland has seconded the nomination of Jill Kerwinski of Burlington for the Office of Speaker. Are there any other nominations for this office? The chair will now recognize the member from Pulte, Representative McCoy. Unmute. OK, 
Can someone make sure that Representative McCoy is unmuted? So I move that nomination cease and that one ballot be cast for the, with the name of Jill Kowinski of, of Burlington. Thank you. The member from Pulteney has moved that nominations cease and that one ballot be cast with the name of Jill Krowinski of Burlington. Are you ready for that question? Again, the question is, shall nominations cease and the Secretary of State cast one ballot for Jill Krowinski of Burlington as Speaker of the House for the ensuing biennium? Are you ready for the question? If so, staff pre shall prepare this question and please notify us when the question has been sent. Oh, so I guess this is. Uh... So they send it, they don't post it up it's on the Everbridge. Screen. Oh, this is the Everbridge thing. Okay. Uh oh. What? I don't have that on Wi Fi. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it goes away and you have to scan. Yeah. Let me go off your phone. Hmm? Let me go off your phone. I have two bars, so I'll, I should be good. Question has been sent. Voting has now begun. Where do they send it to? Everbridge. No, they send it to you. On here. Oh. Are you voting? I responded yes. Oh, you already did. Good. We'll wait about three minutes to give everybody a chance and then we'll ask if anybody needs their name called.
Is there anyone that would like their name called? If you, if so, please raise your hand or speak up. Representative Kimball from Woodstock. Will staff please call any names we asked for? Staff, did you get Representative Kimball? Um, um, Representative Kimball, how would you vote? I vote yes. <laughs> Are there any other names? Representative Morrissey has her hand raised. That was, I could not lower it. I by mistake hit it when I was trying to unmute myself. So thank you for, if that can be lowered by the clerk's office. Are there any others who need to uh, vote still? If not, will staff please share the screen showing the results of the vote sent electronically? Thank you, staff. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. And Representative Jill Krowinski of Burlington has been elected speaker for the ensuing biennium. I now designate the member from Newfane, Representative Long, the member from Poultney, Representative McCoy, and the member from Burlington, Representative Colburn, as a committee to wait upon the speaker elect, inform her of her election, and conduct her to the bar of the house to receive the oath of office. Will the members of the committee meet in the well of the house and proceed to perform their duties? Mr. Secretary of State. Madam Sergeant at Arms. I present to you the members from Newfane, Representative Long, the members from Poultney, Representative McCoy, and the member from Burlington, Representative Colburn. As the committee to wait upon the speaker elect, inform her of her election and conduct her to the bar of the house to receive the oath of office. Will the committee please escort the speaker elect to the bar of the house to receive the oath of office? can't see, but I assume that she's there now. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, 
Jill Krolinski. Aye. Jill Krowinski. Do solemnly affirm that. Do solemnly affirm that. As a member of this assembly. As a member of this assembly. I will not propose or assent to. I will not propose or assent to. Any bill, vote, or resolution. Any bill, vote, or resolution. Which shall appear to me. Which shall appear to me. Injurious to the people. Injurious to the people. Nor do consent to any act or thing whatever. Nor do nor consent to any act or thing whatever. That shall have a tendency. That shall have a tendency. To lessen or abridge their rights and privileges. To lessen or abridge their rights and privileges. As declared by the Constitution of this state as declared by the constitution of this state. But will in all things. But will in all things. Conduct myself as a. Conduct myself as a. Faithful, honest representative. Faithful, honest representative. And guardian of the people. And guardian of the people. According to the best of my judgment and ability. According to the best judgment of my ability. Under the pains and penalties of perjury. Under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do solemnly affirm. I do solemnly affirm. That I will be true and faithful. That I will be true and faithful. To the state of Vermont. To the state of Vermont. And that I will not. And that I will not. Directly or indirectly. Directly or indirectly. Do any act or thing injurious. Do any act or thing injurious. To the constitution or government thereof. To the constitution or government thereof. Under the pains and penalties of perjury. Under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do solemnly affirm. I do solemnly affirm. That I did not at the time of my election to this body. That I did not at the time of my election to this body. And that I do not now. And that I do not now hold any office of profit or trust. Hold any office or profit of profit or trust. Under the authority of Congress. Under the authority of Congress. Under the pains and penalties of perjury. Under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do further solemnly affirm. I do further solemnly affirm. That I will support. That I will support. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Under the pains and penalties of perjury. Under the pains and penalties of perjury. Congratulations, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Secretary Condos. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for electing me Speaker of the Vermont House of Representatives. There is no greater honor, and I am humbled to serve by your side as we come together to lead our state during these trying times. To the speakers and chairs who I've had the privilege to serve with these last two bienniums, you have taught me so much, thank you. To my family and to my friends, I am forever grateful for your guidance and your humor. And to my spouse, Tim Farbus, you are the most patient and caring partner I could ask for. I would not be here today if it wasn't for all your support. Thank you. We gather here for a session like no other. The echoes of the State House are quiet. The hallways of the Capitol are still. Yet our work begins now at the fall of the gavel. The 2021 session will be historic and will be remembered as the coronavirus recovery session. The pandemic is surging faster than any time since it reached our shores. In this global scale, our national efforts to slow the spread has shown mixed results. By any measure, 
Vermont has been fortunate. But even comparatively modest case counts, too many have seen their lives forever changed since the first Vermonter tested positive in March. It has been a very long, almost 10 months now, and we are still many months away from returning to the life that we knew last winter. Each day, we hear of new numbers of those infected and those who are battling illness and isolation. We see our emergency responders and essential workers confront the unknown, and we are so grateful to their work and for them. And for some of us, like my family, we've had to process the sudden grief of a lost loved one due to COVID. The pandemic has impacted all of us. We all have seen changes in our daily routines. Many have had unexpected drop in income or have had to draw down their savings. Others have had to leave the workforce to care for a loved one. This virus has demonstrated the gaps in services Vermonters rely on, whether it's access to broadband, childcare, or housing, or mental health supports, we've seen too many Vermonters struggling to balance their needs. The responsibility before all of us is to provide our constituents with the support they need right now. We must chart a path forward, and it must be on a course that leaves no one behind. I am so grateful to each of you for your willingness to serve and the spirit of collaboration you will bring to your work. In that same spirit, I extend to our House Caucus leaders an open door. And for the members from New Fame, Pulteney, and Burlington, thank you for your help in preparing us for this legislative session, including the member from Londonderry who stepped in as well. We are all in this together. This coming session will take an immense effort on our part to serve Vermonters. Together, we will govern with purpose. We will meet the challenges and we will build a stronger foundation for Vermont, one that moves all 14 Vermont counties forward. So with that, let's begin the work of the 2021 session. Thank you. Thank you so much. The first order of business is now the election of a clerk and nominations for the clerk's office are now in order. The chair recognizes the member from St. Albans, Representative McCarthy. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I nominate Betsy Ann Rask to serve as clerk of the house for the upcoming biennium. She is a resident of Waterbury and is a 2005 graduate of Vermont Law School. Betsy Ann began her legal career as second assistant clerk of the House for the 2006-2008 sessions. In this first stint at the State House, she caught the legislative bug, as she says. She left the clerk's office for a year-round position as a prosecutor in the Office of Professional Regulation, but hoped to return to the legislative branch one day. In 2010, she did come back home as an attorney in the Office of Legislative Counsel, working on issues related to government operations. With respect and gratitude for her 13 years of experience working for the Vermont General Assembly in a nonpartisan manner, it's my privilege to nominate Betsy Ann Rask to serve as Clerk of the House. I hope you'll join me in supporting her. The name of Betsy Ann Rask of Waterbury has been placed in nomination for the Office of Clerk of the House. Is there a second to this nomination? The chair yes. recognizes is the member from Barrytown, Representative LeClaire. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It's with great pride that I second this nomination for Betsy Ann Rasper, House Clerk. I've had the privilege of working with Betsy Ann for over six years in her capacity as lead counsel to the very talented and hardworking government operations committee. She's always come in exceptionally well prepared 
It's hard to ask her a question that she doesn't know the answer to. I know she's a constitutional law addition of the high level of professionalism and nonpartisanship that the former house clerks before her have exhibited. I wholeheartedly endorse this. I'm proud to make this a second. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, speaker. The member from Barrytown has seconded the nomination of Betsy Ann Rask for the Office of Clerk of the House. Are there any other nominations for this office? There being no further nominations, I direct that the vote be taken over Everbridge. Now the question is, shall the House elect Betsy Ann Rask as Clerk of the House for the ensuing biennium? Are you ready for the question? If so, the staff shall prepare the question and please notify us when the question has been sent. The question has been sent. Voting has begun. Would anyone like their name called? Please raise your hand if you would like to be called on to vote. And will the staff please call the names when ready? Representative Terenzini, how do you vote? I certify that I am Representative Taryn Zini of Rutland Town and vote yes. Will the staff please share the screen showing the results of the vote sent electronically? Thank you. Does anyone else wish to vote? Seeing none, will the staff please say the results of the vote? One forty-eight, yes. And one, no. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it, and Betsy Ann Brask of Waterbury has been elected clerk of the house for the ensuing biennium. I designate the member from Newfane, Representative Long, the member from Pulteney, Representative McCoy, and the member from Burlington, Representative Colbert, Colburn, as a committee to wait upon the clerk to elect, inform her of her election and conduct her to the bar of the house to receive the oath of office. Will the committee members please meet in the well of the house and proceed to perform their duties. Madam Speaker. Madam Sergeant at Arms. I present to you the member from Newfane, Representative Long, the member from Pulteney, Representative McCoy, the member from Burlington, Representative Colburn, as the committee to wait upon the clerk elect inform her of her election and conduct her to the bar of the house to receive the oath of office. Will the committee please escort the clerk elect to the bar of the house to receive the oath of office.
Secretary Condos. Thank you. Please raise your right hand. I, Betsy Ann Rask. I, Betsy Ann Rask. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm. That I will be true and faithful. That I will be true and faithful. To the state of Vermont. To the state of Vermont. And that I will not. And that I will not. Directly or indirectly. Directly or indirectly. Do any act or thing. Do any act or thing. Injurious to the Constitution. Injurious to the Constitution. Or government thereof. Or government thereof. Under the pains and penalties of perjury. Under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do solemnly affirm. I do solemnly affirm. That I will faithfully execute the office of. That I will faithfully execute the office. Of clerk of the house. Clerk of the house. For the representatives for the state of Vermont. The representatives of the state of Vermont. And will therein do equal right. And will therein do equal right. And justice to all persons. And justice to all persons. To the best of my judgment and ability. To the best of my judgment and ability. According to law. According to law. Under the pains and penalties of perjury. Under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do solemnly affirm. I do solemnly affirm. That I will support. That I will support. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Under the pains and penalties of perjury. Under the pains and penalties of perjury. Congratulations, Madam House Clerk. Thank you. Congratulations. Now, members elect, all members will now receive the oath of office from the Clerk of the House. Please note that members participating over Zoom will be muted. Please also note that in taking your oath, you have the choice to swear to God or to affirm under the penalties of perjury. You may stay in your seats if you choose. I and say your name. Do solemnly swear or affirm that as a member of this assembly. Will not propose or assent to any bill or resolution. Any bill or resolution. Which shall appear to me injurious to the people. Shall appear to me. Nor do nor consent to any act or thing whatever that shall have a tendency to lessen or abridge their rights and privileges. As declared by the Constitution of this state. but will in all things conduct myself as a faithful, honest representative and guardian of the people according to the best of my judgment and ability. If an oath shall help me God or if an affirmation under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will be true and faithful to the state of Vermont and that I will not directly or indirectly do any act or thing injurious to the Constitution or government thereof. If an oath, so help me God, or if an affirmation under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do solemnly swear or affirm that I did not at the time of my election to this body and that I do not now hold any office of profit or trust under the authority of Congress, 
if an oath, so help me God, or if an affirmation under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do further solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States. If an oath, so help me God, or if an affirmation under the pains and penalties of perjury. I will now read a communication from the clerk of the house. Madam Speaker, I have the honor of informing you and the members of the house that I have appointed Melissa Kuzarek of Montpelier as first assistant clerk and Alona Tate of Montpelier as second assistant clerk, Rebecca Silbernagel of Basin as journal clerk and Christine Didmeyer of Plainfield as assistant clerk. Sincerely, Betsy Ann Rask, clerk of the house. First and second assistant clerks will now receive the oath of office. I say your name. I, Alana Tate, you solemnly affirm. You solemnly affirm that I will be true and faithful to the state of Vermont. I will be true and faithful to the state of Vermont. And that I will not directly or indirectly. That I will not directly or indirectly. Do any act or thing injur injurious to the constitution or government thereof. Act or thing injurious to the constitution or government thereof. Under the pains and penalties of perjury. Under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do solemnly affirm. I do solemnly affirm that I will faithfully execute the office of Assistant Clerk of the House of Representatives for the State of Vermont. That I will faithfully execute the office of the Assistant Clerk of the House of Representatives for the State of Vermont. And will therein do equal right and justice to all persons. Will therein do equal right and justice to all persons. To the best of my judgment and ability. To the best of my judgment and ability. According to law. According to law. Under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do solemnly affirm. I do solemnly affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States under the pains and penalties of perjury. Under the pains and penalties of perjury. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. The House is now ready to do business. We have a few house resolutions and joint resolutions to take up at this time. HR 1 is a resolution relating to the house declaring a state of emergency offered by representatives Krowinski, Bartholomew, Donahue, LeClaire, Long, and McCoy. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. Whereas Governor Philip B. Scott declared a state of emergency with regard to the COVID-19 pandemic until January 15th, 2021, and whereas the Center for Disease Control, the CDC, has issued guidelines, including that people maintain a safe social distance of six feet and minimize gatherings to reduce the infection rates of COVID-19. And whereas the separation of powers between branches of government necessitates the governor's declaration of emergency does not include the legislative branch, and whereas the House of Representatives must meet in order to address the needs of Vermonters and confront the threat of COVID-19 to the state of Vermont. And whereas the House must complete its business in the safest manner possible to prevent the spread of COVID-19 throughout Vermont communities. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the House of Representatives that based on the governor's declared state of emergency, Center for Disease Control guidelines, and protecting the safety of Vermonters, the House of Representatives declares that there is a state of emergency through March 19, 2021 for its rules and procedures. The question is, shall the resolution be adopted? Are you ready for the question? If so, the clerk will prepare the question and notify us when the question has been sent.
question has been sent. And voting has begun. Would anyone like their name called? Please raise your hand if you do. If any members wish to vote, please raise your hand. Will the clerk please share the screen showing the results of the vote sent electronically? Thank you. And does anyone else wish to vote? Seeing none, will the staff please say the result of the vote? Those voting yes, 143. Those voting no, one. Yeah, it's appear to have it. The ayes do have it, and you have adopted HR1. HR2 is a House resolution authorizing remote debate and voting in the House and House committees offered by representatives Krowinski, Bartholomew, Donahue, LeClaire, Long, and McCoy. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. Whereas Philip B. Scott, declare, Governor Philip B. Scott, declared a state of emergency with regards to the COVID-19 pandemic until January 15th, 2021. And whereas the House of Representatives declared a state of emergency through March 9, 2021. And whereas the CDC has issued guidelines, including that people maintain a safe social distance of six feet and minimizing gatherings to reduce the infection rates of COVID-19. And whereas the House of Representatives and the standing committees of the House of Representatives must meet in order to confront the threat of COVID-19 to the state of Vermont. And whereas in recognition of the declared state of emergency and CDC guidelines, the House must complete its business in the safest manner possible to protect Vermonters. And whereas to allow access the proceedings of the House of Representatives and the committees of the House of Representatives, members of the public and press shall have access to live streaming of these remote proceedings. And whereas to properly conduct the business of the House of Representatives in an open and accessible manner, the House of Representatives amends the rules and orders of the House of Representatives to allow for remote participation during the House's declared state of emergency. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the House of Representatives that while the state of Vermont is subject to the House declaration of a state of emergency, the House of Representatives adds temporary rule nine of the rules and orders of the House of Representatives to read 9A, subsection A, the House of Representatives shall allow remote participation while the House's declaration of a state of emergency is in effect. Remote participation shall consist of members being permitted to vote remotely and engage in debate remotely. Members allowed to participate remotely shall validate that they are the person conducted remotely and votes conducted remotely shall be compiled by the clerk of the house. A quorum will be calculated as those members present in the chamber of the House of Representatives and those members who are connected remotely and voting remotely. Subsection B, this rule shall expire at the earlier of one, the convening of the 2023 biennial session or two, the expiration of the House's declaration of a state of emergency in response to COVID-19 and any extension of this declaration by a joint resolution or House resolution. And be it further resolved by the House of Representatives that the House of Representatives adds temporary rule 29A of the rules and orders of the House of Representatives to read 29A sub A, the standing committees of the House of Representatives shall be permitted to vote remotely while the House's declaration of a state of emergency is in effect sub B, all other rules regarding a quorum and other rules of the committees remain in effect. And C, this rule shall expire at the earlier of one, the convening of the 2023 biennial session, or two, the expiration of the House's declaration of a state of emergency in response to COVID-19, and any extension of this declaration by a joint resolution or House resolution. The question is, shall the resolution be adopted? 
Are you ready for the question? If so, the clerk will prepare the question and please notify us when the question has been sent. The question has been sent. And voting has begun. Would anyone like their name called? Please raise your hand. And when ready, the clerk will call the names. Terenzini of Rutland Town. I certify that I am Representative Terenzini of Rutland Town and vote yes. And will the clerk please share the screen showing the results of the vote sent electronically when ready. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to vote? Will the clerk please call the name? Representative Anthony of Barry City. I vote yes, thank you. And when the staff is ready, will you please say the results of the vote? Those voting yes, 147. Those voting no, one. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it, and you have adopted HR2. HR3 is a House resolution relating to the House rules offered by Representatives Krowinski, Bartholomew, Donahue, LeClaire, Long, and McCoy. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. HR3, resolved by the House of Representatives that the House rules in effect at the end of the 2019 2020 session be the rules of this biennial session until others are adopted. The question is shall the resolution be adopted? Are you ready for the question? If so, the clerk shall prepare the question and please notify us when it's been sent. The question has been sent. Voting has begun.
Terenzini of Rutland Town. I certify that I am Representative Terenzini of Rutland Town and vote yes. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to vote? If so, will the clerk please call the names? Does anyone else wish to vote? Will staff please say the results of the vote when ready? Those voting yes, 146. Those voting no, zero. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it, and you have adopted HR3. HR4 is a House resolution informing the Senate of the House's organization offered by Representatives Krowinski, Bartholomew, Donahue, LeClaire, Long, and McCoy. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. Resolved by the House of Representatives that the Clerk of the House inform the Senate that the House is organized and is ready to proceed on its part with the business of the session. The question is, shall the resolution be adopted? Are you ready for the question? If so, the clerk will prepare the question and please notify us when the question has been sent. The question has been sent. And voting has begun. Would anyone like their name called? If so, please raise your hand and the clerk will call on you when ready. Terenzini of Rutland Town. I certify that I am Representative Terenzini of Rutland Town and vote yes. When ready, will the clerk please share the screen showing the results of the votes sent electronically. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to vote? Seeing none. Will the staff please say the results of the vote? 
Those voting yes, 144. Those voting no, zero. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. And you have adopted HR 4. HR 5 is a House resolution informing the governor of the House's organization offered by Representatives Krowinski, Bartholomew, Donahue, LeClaire, Long, and McCoy. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. Resolved by the House of Representatives that His Excellency, the Governor, be informed by the committee that the House has completed its organization and is ready to receive any communication from him. The question is, shall the resolution be adopted? Are you ready for the question? If so, the clerk will prepare the question and notify us when the question has been sent. The question has been sent. Voting has begun. Would anyone like their name called? Please raise your hand if you wish to vote. And will the clerk please call the names when ready? Terenzini of Rutland Town. I certify that I am Representative Terenzini of Rutland Town and vote yes. Ready? Will the clerk please share her screen, showing the results of the vote sent electronically? Thank you. Does anyone else wish to vote? Seeing none, will the staff please say the results of the vote? Those voting yes, 145. Those voting no, zero. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it, and you have adopted HR 5. Pursuant to the provisions of HR 5, I hereby appoint a committee, I hereby appoint as a committee to inform the governor that the House is ready to proceed with the business of the session. The following members are the member from Brattleboro, Representative Tolino. The member from Manchester, Representative James. The member from Londonderry, Representative Paella. The member from Burlington, Representative Tina. The member from Rutland City, Representative Pupoli. And the member from St. Albans Town, Representative Dickinson. And now, pursuant to the provisions of House Rule 25, the following members were elected by their respective caucuses to the committee on rules. They are the member from Heartland, Representative Bartholomew, the member from Northfield, Representative Donahue, the member from Barry Town, Representative LeClaire, the member from New Thing, Representative Long, the member from St. Albans City, Representative McCarthy, and the member from Pulteney, Representative McCoy. And now we'll move on to our joint Senate resolutions. JRS 1 is a joint resolution relating to joint rules offered by Senator, Senator Maza and adopted by the Senate. 
please listen to the reading of the resolution. Resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives that the joint rules of the Senate and House as adopted in 2019 be adopted as the joint rules of this biennial session until others are adopted. Now you've heard the reading of the resolution. The question is, shall the resolution be adopted in concurrence? Are you ready for the question? If so, the clerk will prepare the question and notify us when the question has been sent. The question has been sent, Madam Speaker. And voting has begun. Would anyone like their name called? If so, please raise your hand and the clerk will call on you when ready. Does anyone else wish to vote? Seeing none, when the clerk is ready, will you please share your screen showing the results of the votes? sent electronically. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to vote? Seeing none, will the staff please say the results of the vote? Those voting yes, 145. Those voting no, one. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it, and you have adopted the resolution in concurrence. JRS 2 is a joint resolution relating to the adoption of an emergency temporary order, temp emergent temp order joint rule 22A offered by Senator Vallant. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. Whereas it is critical to take steps to control outbreaks of COVID-19 to minimize the risk to the public, maintain the health and safety of Vermonters and limit the spread of infection in our community. Whereas the governor of the state of Vermont issued a declaration of state of emergency in response to COVID-19. Whereas to confront and address the threat of COVID-19, joint committees of the legislature must continue to meet. 
whereas the rules, tradition, and custom require that for joint committee to formally meet a committee quorum must be physically present in a single location, and only those physically present at that meeting location are permitted to vote. Whereas to appropriately address the needs of the state of Vermont while limiting the threat of infection, joint committees may need to meet and vote electronically. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives that an emergency temporary joint rule to be designated Rule 22A be adopted by the Senate and House of Representatives to read as follows. Rule 22A, emergency rule regarding joint committee meetings. Subsection A, the Joint Rules Committee is vested with the authority to permit any joint committee of the Vermont legislature, including itself and committee conference committees, to meet and vote electronically as the Joint Rules Committee determines appropriate. If necessary, the Joint Rules Committee may make this authorization remotely in conformity with this rule. Subsection B, the authority of the Joint Rules Committee under this Rule 22A terminates upon the expiration of the executive's declared emergency. The question is, shall the resolution be adopted in concurrence? Are you ready for the question? If so, the clerk will prepare the question and please notify us when the question is answered. Madam Speaker, the question has been sent. And voting has begun. Well, isn't that nice? Yeah. Would anyone like their name called? If so, please raise your hand and the clerk will call on you when ready. Seeing none, will the clerk please share the screen showing the results of the vote sent electronically when ready. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to vote? Seeing none, will the staff, will the clerk please say the results of the vote? Those voting yes, 142. 
those voting no, one. The ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it, and you have adopted the resolution in concurrence. JRS 3 is a joint resolution to provide for a joint assembly to receive the report of the committee appointed to canvas votes for state officers offered by Senator Ballant. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. Resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives that the two houses meet in joint assembly on Thursday, January 7th, 2021 at 10 o'clock in the forenoon to receive the report of the joint canvassing committee appointed to canvas votes for governor, lieutenant governor, state treasurer, secretary of state, auditor of accounts, and attorney general. And, and if it shall be declared by said committee that there had been no election by the voters of any said state officers, then to proceed forthwith to elect such officers as has not been elected by the voters. And be it further resolved that the joint assembly be concurrently conducted electronically at which members of the general assembly may participate, debate, and vote from a remote location. And be it further resolved that should a ballot be necessary, voting by ballot shall be conducted as practicable, consistent with Ver Vermont's early or absentee voter statute at 17 BSA section 2531 and subsequent. The question is, shall the resolution be adopted in concurrence? Are you ready for the question? If so, we will use a show of hands for this vote. Just giving everyone a moment to prepare, make the transition from Pepperbridge to hands. Are you ready for the question? If so, without objection, we're using, oh, my apologies. All right, let's go. <laughs> All those in favor, please raise your hand. You may stop raising your hand. Thank you. Will the staff please clear the hands? And now, all those opposed, please raise your hand. You may stop raising your hand. Thank you. Will the staff please clear the hands? And the ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it, and you have adopted the resolution in concurrence. JRS 4 is a joint resolution providing the canvassing committee of the General Assembly. Meetings shall be concurrently conducted electronically, offered by Senator Fallon. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. Resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives. The canvassing committee of the General Assembly meeting shall be concurrently conducted electronically, at which members may participate from a remote location. The question is, shall the resolution be adopted in concurrence? Are you ready for the question? If so, without objection, we will use a show of hands for this vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. And you may stop raising your hand. Thank you. Will the staff please clear the hands? And all those opposed, please raise your hand. Voting. Thank you. Will the staff please clear the hands? The ayes appear to have it, the ayes do have it, and you have adopted the resolution in concurrence. JRS 5 is a joint resolution to provide for a joint assembly to hear a message from the governor offered by Senator Ballin. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. Resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives 
that the two houses meet in joint assembly on Thursday, January 7th, 2021 at two o'clock in the afternoon to receive a message from the governor and be it further resolved that the joint assembly shall be concurrently conducted electronically. The question is, shall the resolution be adopted in concurrence? Are you ready for the question? If so, without objection, we will use a show of hands for this vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. You may stop raising your hand. And will the clerk please clear the hands? Thank you. And now all those opposed, please raise your hand. Thank you. Will the clerk please clear the hands? The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. And you have adopted the resolution in concurrence. JRS 6 is a joint resolution relating to town meeting adjournment offered by Senator Ballant. Please listen to the reading of the resolution. Resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives that when the two houses adjourn on Friday, February 26, 2021, or Saturday, February 27, 2021, it be to meet again no later than Tuesday, March 9, 2021. The question is, shall the resolution be adopted in concurrence? Are you ready for the question? If so, without objection, we will use a show of hands for this vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. And you may stop raising your hand. Thank you. And will the clerk please clear the hands? Now, all those opposed, please raise your hand. Thank you. And will those staff please clear the hands? The eyes appear to have it, the eyes do have it, and you have adopted the resolution in concurrence. We have completed our business for this morning. So at this time, the house will stand in recess until 1.30 p.m.